Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to my unboxing and review of an Invicta that is one of the hottest new budget watches of 2020. Did I actually just say that out loud? Welcome today to my unboxing and review of an Invicta that is one of the hottest new budget watches of 2020. Well, I guess it must be true then. This is the Invicta 31290, though I suspect most people are going to refer to it as the Invicta 1953 because it is an homage of the original Rolex Submariner from 1953. Now, the old stalwart of the Invicta range was the Pro Diver, their 40mm Seiko powered budget Rolex homage. I suspect this new one is going to take over the mantle as the Invicta that YouTube guys and wisses all across the world actually quite rate. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to peel off the stickers and show you the new watch. I'm also going to do some side-by-side -side comparisons with the old Pro Diver, which I'm wearing now. And I'm going to do something I suspect most people are going to do with this new Invicta when they get it. I'm going to put it on a Bond NATO so you can go for that whole Sean Connery look for less than $120. Let's flip the camera and get on with it. Sorry about that. At least I didn't say... Miss Moneypenny. So two of the distinctive Invicta signature yellow boxes and one brand new NATO from Moose Straps. Let's have some fun with this lot. Now, one thing, unfortunately, I cannot help you particularly with at this point in time, this point in time being the 8th of April 2020, is a link to buy the watch. I couldn't find one of these in Australia. Like I said, they are genuinely hot at the moment. Most places are sold out. I bought mine last month from Joma Shop in the States. I paid 100 plus tax plus delivery, I ended up paying 130 US for this one. I will leave a link to Joma in the description of the video. I believe they're sold out today, but they may be back in stock by the time you watch this vid. So first we'll look at this one, then we'll compare it to that one, and then we'll pop it on that one. Now one thing I'm not going to dwell on particularly today is the Invicta brand. I'm assuming that if you're watching this video, then you at least are entertaining the prospect of Invicta ownership if you don't own one now already, that is. Now, some of the big chunky Claude Hopper watches, they're not really my style, but everybody has their own taste and Invicta have a lot of fans, that is for sure. One thing a lot of people don't like is their QVC style pricing strategies. I mean, 695, but yours today, if you're one of the first 100 callers, for only $99. This one generally, I don't recommend paying more than about 100, 110 US for it. But it looks all right, doesn't it? Certainly different from a lot of the Invicta catalog, that's for sure. Like I said in the intro, it is a copy of the original Rolex Submariner from 1953, sharing a lot of the design features. Invicta and 1953 there on the dial. If you needed an extra clue, the same pencil hands, the same gilt indices, the same distinctive bezel layout with those slightly thicker markers at the fives, and that rather unusual and again rather distinctive tip of the second hand. It's a kind of lollipop on the very tip of the second hand, just like the old sub did. Okay then, let's peel off some stickers. All right, peeled and revealed. Let's size this one up. So 40 millimeters in diameter. 14mm thick, 48mm lug tip to lug tip, 20mm lug width, tapering down to just under 18, back up to just under 20, and sized up for me now, 7 inch wrist, this one weighs in at 137 grams, so pretty much all the dimensions, all the weight that you would expect of this style of watch. So all stainless steel construction, 316L stainless steel throughout, case, bezel, crown, and solid stainless steel bracelet. Now we do have hollow end links, however, and it is a carryover from the regular Pro Diver. It's a slightly nasty press class, but at least it does have a reasonable four points of micro adjustment. One thing you probably noticed already is completely different set of case finishing. Very nice indeed. I mean, I must say, I am quite impressed with the overall standard of brushing on a $100 watch. Really nice, smooth, horizontal brush on the mid case. Unguarded vintage style crown looks great with the Invicta logo on the end. Thankfully, that's just about the only Invicta logo you'll find on this watch. And a coin edge bezel as well. One really interesting point, there's a beautiful little high polished chamfered edge when they transition from the brushed side to the brushed lugs. Very nice indeed. And the bracelet is all brushed throughout, and again, it's brushed to a fairly reasonable standard. Couple of weak points being the hollow end links in the press clasp, but not bad for a $100 watch. 
And you're not getting sapphire crystal, that is just a dead flat piece of mineral crystal covering the dial. But again, I'm not gonna complain too much of the price. Bezel is 120 click, unidirectional. It is fairly grippy because it's that coin edge. And the one on this watch in particular, fantastic. No back plate, no bounce, really solid action. Definitely a bit of a surprise overall, the quality of this thing. And the vintage style dial is very pretty. Big triangle there at the 12 o'clock, batons at the three, the six, and the nine. Circular indices everywhere else. Everything just printed on, they kind of slightly raised, embossed those indices, but everything else just printed. The Invicta logo printed above the pinion, 1953 automatic above the six. Nice and clean, they haven't over cluttered this one at all. And like I said, they haven't over branded it. Printed minute track around the outer edge, all in gilt, and there is a surprising amount of loom here. They call it Tritty Bright. Kind of looks like that C3 old radium vintage style. A reasonable amount on the hands and on the indices. No loom tip to the second hand on this one, so you only get the two hands whirring around after dark. Loom pip up on there on the aluminium bezel insert at the 12 o'clock. You know, you shouldn't expect too much loom from a $100 watch. I've never seen one that's outstanding to date. And this one isn't outstanding, but it doesn't do too badly for itself. The pencil hands are quite slim, but I don't think they look ridiculous. I think the whole thing does just about balance and they're also golden color to match the rest of the watch. Overall, no credit to Invicta, but a very nice looking dial. And one thing that I know we're all gonna breathe a sigh of relief when I show you this, ah, no Invicta etching all over the side of the case either. Popping a link to show you the ubiquitous Seiko NH35 beating away in the back with the signature bright yellow Invicta rotor. A nice touch, I think, there, adding that rotor. Now, no date on the dial. Screw down crown, screw down case back, 200 meters of water resistance. But we do have a ghost date position because they've used the NH35 rather than the no date specific NH38. But again, I'm not really complaining too much of the price. I've seen watches costing four and five times this that don't bother to use this specific no date movement in spite of the lack of date on the dial. NH35 really is the standard setter in watches under 300 US dollars. 24 dual, hacking and hand winding, bi-directional winding, shock suspension system, so it should take a couple of knocks as well. 21,600 vibrations per hour, so you get six ticks of the second hand per second. This one, plus six seconds per day. The stated tolerance is a minus 20 to plus 40, so this one is pretty good with a decent amplitude. Beat error, nothing too outrageous there either and it wears very nicely. There's a reason that these 40 mil Submariner homage watches are so, so popular. It's because they wear fantastically. You'll notice inverted mid-link of the end link. Now I've got a seven inch wrist as discussed. Even if you've got a slightly smaller wrist than I have, that is key. That means that the bracelet starts to conform to your wrist. It doesn't jut out on the other side, giving it effectively a longer lug to lug than that 48 mil suggests. In some ways, it's even a shorter lug to lug than the 48 mil suggests. Looks good. I'm a sucker for this vintage look, and this is by far the cheapest vintage diver I have reviewed on the channel. Like I said, the handset isn't enormous. They are pencil for a reason, pencil slim, but that kind of Fotina yellow against the black, really nice and legible, looks great. Outside in some natural light, there doesn't appear to be any anti-reflective coating on that mineral crystal, but again, because of the inherent legibility of that Rolex original design, it is still pretty easy to read in all light conditions. That's it on wrist. There is a little bit more curvature to this mid case than on the regular Pro Diver. I'll show you comparisons in just a second or two. It's slightly slab-sided, this one, almost like the Tudor Black Bay, but it's not a big problem at only 14 mil thick. So overall first impressions of this one are excellent. It certainly has exceeded my expectations. I wasn't expecting an awful lot and I think it has pleasantly surprised me. Love that matte aluminium bezel insert rather than a shiny, shiny one. The whole thing looks a lot classier than the $100 price tag would suggest. Really nice standard of finishing. Love that beveled edge, the high polished bevel and a really nice standard of brushing on the bracelet overall. Unguarded crown, the whole thing looks really, really good. Now it still is only a $100 watch. It doesn't feel particularly luxurious on wrist, you're gonna get a bit of rattle from those hollow end links for sure, and the clasp is a little bit nasty. But you don't get the earth for a hundred bucks, and if you can pick one of these up, I would recommend that you do pick one of these ones up. If you compare it side by side with the old Pro Diver, the Pro Diver begins to look a bit cheesy by comparison with its high polish shiny aluminium insert, those giant wing Invicta logo and the giant Invicta counterbalance, not to mention Invicta scrawled into the edge there. 
There's also, I think, a noticeable difference in the brushing quality on the lug uppers. I moaned about that when I reviewed this Invicta a while ago. Certainly much, much smoother on the 1953, on the 31290 than on the Pro Diver. Plus, you get the brush mid-links rather than the high polished. It is, however, the same carryover clasp, just with slightly different Invicta branding punched in there. The new watch also has a much more elegant side profile as well, thanks in part to that coin edge bezel and the downward slope of the aluminium insert that it contains. Also, not as much case back protrusion from the, the new watch, the 1953. You can see a distinct difference that's definitely more pot-like on the old Pro Diver than the new one. That'll help it wear much nicer on wrist, much less bobble if you're moving around. Even the crown appears to be nicer, better knurling, better grip from the 1953, and it's not high polish shiny like on the Pro Diver. There's a comparison of both the dials and it's certainly a much cleaner look rather than, again, those high polish surrounded indices and the applied logo there on the old Pro Diver. Now, obviously you lose the date, so that's something you're gonna to have to consider if you do fancy one of these 1953s, but I think that's a small sacrifice to pay for a much, much cleaner look. And just for fun to finish, that's it on a Bond NATO. This one, a kind of premium NATO from Moose Straps out of Canada. If you really do want to go for the Sean Connery look, well, first you need to be Sean Connery, then you need to get a white tuxedo, then you need to wear it on one of those vintage Bond red and green stripey ones, but it needs to be 18 mil so you can see the spring bars either side of the lugs there. So overall, it seems like you're gonna to have to exercise a bit of patience, at least at the moment anyway, if you wanna pick up one of these at or around the list price. But if you do, I think you might be impressed with what you find. Noticeable improvements over the regular Pro Diver. I know these are more expensive. It's gonna cost you 100 as opposed to 70, but I think well worth it. So there you have it, a smoking hot budget Invicta for around 100 bucks. Who knew? That assumes though that you can actually find one. If you're watching this video in April 2020, that's gonna be a hard task. Perhaps if you're watching it later on in the year or even next year or the year after, then it will be easier once the initial hubbub surrounding the watch dies down and more of them are released onto the market. But should you buy one? Well, if you like the look, I think you probably should. Really nice case design. It's kind of subtle, it's refined. It's everything that most Invictors aren't, quite frankly. And for a hundred bucks, there aren't all that many vintage style divers on the market. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Who knows what I'll be saying then?